Hello friends, welcome to my channel Coding Environment. This channel is all about computers and different programming languages used in today's IT world. Today we are going to learn something about solid design principles in Java or any other object oriented programming language. So the agendas for today's videos are what is solid design principles? What is the significance of this design principle in software development? What is single responsibility design principle, which is one of the part of solid design principle? And then one example of single design principle. So let's see what is solid design principle. So the next question is what is solid design principles? Solid design principles are class level object oriented design principles which allow a developer to write a code without making code rot and a good maintainable code for a long time. So the next question is what is a code rot? So when developer design without using structured design principles like solid, they can create a long lasting problems for the future developers working on the project and they limit the potential for the application they are developing. These issues are commonly known as code rot. So what is solid design principle? Is it a one single principle or a combination of multiple principle? Solid design principle is combination of five principles altogether. The five principles which makes one solid design principle is single responsibility principle, open and close principle, Liskov substitution principle, interface segregation principle, Dependency Inversion Principle If you closely look these five principles and the name of solid design principle, the solid name is coined, the solid name is coined from the initial of all these five principles. S-O-L-I-D This five initial of these five principles make a solid design principle. So if a developer is developing a code, how we can identify that he is not creating a code rot for other future developers. What are the things we can look into his code that it will not create a problem for the future developers. One thing which we can look is rigidity. So what do we mean by rigidity? Rigidity is a condition where making changes in one class forces us to make changes into the other classes also. What are the other things we can look for? The other things is fragility. What do you mean by this, this term? What do you mean by this fragility term? Fragility is a condition where writing a code for one feature making a defects for the other feature. It means when you are going to test the code for one feature, it will go and create a problem for the other feature. The other one is immobility. What do you mean by this term? Immobility is a condition where for a developer it is very difficult to extract one piece of code or one module of the code from the application and reuse it for the other application. So if you are seeing these three terms that rigidity, fragility and immobility in the code, you can say that these codes are going to create a code route for the future developers. So let's see one by one what are these five solid principles for object oriented programming like Java. In this video, I am going to concentrate only on the single responsibility principle and the others I will cover in the next videos. So what is single responsibility principle? So what is single responsibility principle? Single responsibility principle states that a class should have one and only one responsibility. In other words, we can say that a class should have only one reason to change. Now let me give you an example where I can show how a code is violating a single responsibility principle. Now suppose I have a sales order where I have a method which will give me the sales order of the particular month. Then I have a method which will save the order into some database. And I have a method where I can export the sales order from the export XML method for a given month. Now you can see that this particular class sales order have three methods 
and all these three methods is performing some different action. So if you closely look this particular class, it don't have a single responsibility. It has actually three responsibility. One is to giving the information, the other is to giving the information into the XML format and the other is to save the orders into some form of DB. Now suppose tomorrow if I'm going to change my DB from one type of DB to the other, like right now it is saving into the MySQL, I can change it to the MongoDB or a PostgreSQL DB. In that case, I have to go and edit this particular class. Also suppose if I'm going tomorrow and saying that I don't want the reports in the XML format, I want into the CSV format. Again, you have to go and change this class. Again, if there is sales order also, if I need some more information on the sales order, you have to go and change this class. So you can see that changing non-correlated thing is going to change the particular class or I have to go and edit this class. This is clearly violating the single responsibility principle. So if I have to make the sales order class in a single responsibility principle, what I can do is I can segregate these three methods into three different classes. One class having the sales order, the other class will have a save order which will save the information into the DB and the other one is export order where I have the two methods which will export the data into XML format and also into the CSV format. So if my classes are segregated in this way, you can see that saving order or if I'm going to change my DB from one type to other type, it is not going to change my sales order class or it is not going to change my export order class. Similarly, if tomorrow I'm going to uh, ask the information in not in a CSV format or in some other format, it will not going to change my save order or my sales order class. It will go and change only the export order class. So this makes this particular sales order class in a single responsibility principle. So this is a correct format where we can say that it is following my single responsibility principle. Let's see the other example. Now suppose I have a text manipulator class which takes the input as a string and it manipulates in some way. So here you can see there is like text manipulator classes there, get text is there, append text, find word and replace text, find word and delete text and print text. So if you see all this, all these methods of this particular text in text manipulator class is manipulating the text, uh, given text. But if you see this print text, it is not manipulating it. So you can say that this particular text manipulator class should not have this print text. The responsibility of this text manipulator class should only should only be the manipulating the string. So if you if you see this is also not following my single responsibility principle. So this is also not correct. To make this correct, you have to take this print text into some other uh, text printer class, and then you can use it for like uh, printing the text or printing the string into some text printer or a print text or a print out each word or, or in different formats. So this is a single responsibility principle. But following a single responsibility principle is not so easy for a developer. What is the difficulty a developer will face while writing a single responsibility class? There is two difficulty in my view, a developer can face uh, writing a single responsibility uh, principle class is he has to know what is the complete responsibility of each class. And in the vision of two different developers, the class responsibility can change. So these two things make a developer very difficult to write a single responsibility class. So this is all about the single responsibility principle. We will follow the other solid design principles in next video. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.